بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين خصوصا سلام على حسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى تبعه إلى يوم الدين السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين The life and the teachings and the story of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu is not only a story, only a tragedy, only a life of a companion or only becoming a victim of a tyrant of that time but it is completely at the peak of the peak to show and manifest that what is the purpose of life <coughs> and how to achieve the purpose of life against all odds when things and everything turns against you. We might have many things as well which are against us, but his life is shown and he radiallahu ta'ala anhu alayhi salam was a continuation of the mission of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. So he was a continuation of the mission. The prophethood ended upon the Prophet wasalam, but the prophetic mission was to continue until day of judgment. So his life shows us, gives us identity because many of us have identity crisis. We don't know who you are. A uh, lion knows who a lion is. He walks like a lion. He roars like a lion. A mouse knows who it is. It actually lives life as mouse. The cow lives life of a cow. A buffalo lives life of a buffalo. Dog lives, dog knows what it should, what is the sound. It should bark and what it should do. But when there is a identity crisis, a dog is trying to act like a cat. A donkey is trying to act like a monkey. Then actually it is quite a mixture and disaster. So animals know the identity they live, but human beings, they sometimes lose their identity. Identity meaning who they are. Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored. He is the creator and maker. So he has honored and given you identity that you are one of his best creation. You are the future kings and queens of paradise. Every believer, every human being have a potential to become king and queen of their own paradise. Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu was the prince of all of the Jannah, putting all together. But everyone will have their own kingdom. So you have the potential. But now when we look at identity crisis, meaning sometimes we are trying to act like shaitan, although we are not shaitan. 
we are not shaitan but then a lion who tries to make sounds of a donkey or behave like a donkey is problematic so you are a lion in the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah azza wa jalla said wala qad karamna bani adam allah had honored bani adam the children of adam men and women so you have a great status identity allah has given you that your identity is to be deputy and khalif of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla maydu but here we are sometimes trying to trying to identify ourselves like devil how what do i mean by that do devilish acts what is the devil what is shaitan does arrogant not submitting to allah not praying to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lying wasting time wasting life so sometime when we lose our identity we end up being and sometime we are just following anyone in the fashion industry or any other political leader any social leader any of the leaders in whilst allah azza wa jalla categorically said there is no in the quran wa khatamun nabiyyin the prophet of islam is the last of the messengers and prophets what does that mean he is actually the last leader as being a prophet so who are you who are me when there is khatme nabuwat who are we following them where do others leaders come when there is no prophet to come so we will follow those people then who are opposite to the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam then so it's like a prince there's a country and there is a prince the king wants to make the prince ruler of a particular part of his empire a country but the prince loses his identity he thinks i am beggar he's like he behaves like beggars outside he sometimes behave like druggies sometime actually like he is just a normal person working on the street the king will become angry the king will become displeased that i have this is i want to make this my son a prince and he behaving like beggars and some other people and some bad people so he will punish that if you keep on doing this you are disgracing my blessing upon you you are giving bad name to me as well so without any similitude because allah azza wa jal does not have any children or anything but allah azza wa jal chooses his beloved people the creation so allah has chosen us as to be prince of our own paradise and then he sees that we are behaving like devils shayatin evil people derogatory then allah azza wa jalla become displeased and that is why we end up in punishment that we had honor of being prince and we are behaving like actually beggars and homeless people who doesn't have home what do these homeless people what happens our brother in the seed he works with them he feeds them every week they don't have identity sometimes they don't know where they're from they don't have address where someone can can help them sometimes they don't have identity documents that's what's happening that they are living in the street so when you become and lose identity then you are like a homeless person walking on the face of the earth don't know them if he is if i see in tv yeah this person have very good dress he has very good hair oh yeah i like it 
Now I won't think he is a dancer, he has his own profession, he's a gangster, he's an actor. I will say, okay, I'll, next time I go to the barber, oh, I want that style. This is called identity crisis, that this person doesn't have his identity. He doesn't know who his father is. Spiritual father, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he is your spiritual father. Now, it's like you who forgot your father, who is your father, and you see any person, oh yeah, I like this person, he is my father, I'll follow him. He is my father. You, this disgracing people will say, you are attributing yourself to a wrong person, your father is one only. And you are attributing, no, because he has big car, he has um, good health, or he has big or money, and you made him your father, you, you follow him, you attribute to him. No, your father is one only. Your God is one, your messenger is one. He is your spiritual father. And when you lose your identity, the who is your really spiritual father, then anyone you see walking on the street, in the film, in the drama, in there, you will just end up following them. But people have their identity, whoever have their, they know their identity, they are following their identity. You see, in this country, many countries, People who are gays, they know their identity, they identify, I am gay, and then they live up to it. They say, yes, we are. Here we are, we want our rights. We want people to respect us. We want to marry. Lesbians, they want to marry. They're not shy. Like you, me, and anyone. Oh, I am shy if I dress up like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi or if I dress up how Allah Azzawajal wants, if I live my life how Allah wants, so what will people think? Why are they gays, lesbian, druggies, why are they not thinking like this? Because they're identifying themselves as one thing and then they're living up to it. They even actually lobby the government and people that we want our rights. And you are created as a human being, one of the best creation, follower, given the best prophet, given the best book, and you are healthy, psychologically a thing, and then when you don't know your own reality, you end up following any willy-nilly here, there, actually. Anyone can come and take you like an animal, anyone holds its reins, and there you are, and takes away. That's when you don't know. You are then. Once you know your identity, that's the lesson in the life of Sayyidina Abu Hussain, radiallahu ta'ala. And once you know, the whole world cannot move you. Whole armies cannot move you. Death cannot move you. Then you are like a rock. Waves are coming, splashing it, but the rock is there. So Sayyidina Imam Hussain, radiallahu anhu ki zindagi, میں صرف یہ سبق نہیں کہ ایک واقعہ ہو یا وہ ایک واقعہ نہیں وہ ایک زندگی کا ایک مقصد بتایا گیا اور اس مقصد کو حاصل کیسے کرنا وہ بتایا گیا انہوں نے کہ جب ہر چیز خلاف بھی ہو جائے پھر بھی تم مقصد حاصل کر سکتے ہو تم کامیاب ہو سکتے ہو اس سے سب سے پہلی بات یہ تھی کہ اپنی پہچان انہوں نے سکھائی کہ اپنی پہچان مت بھولو انہوں نے پہچا ہے میں اللہ کا بندہ ہوں نبی علیہ السلام کا امتی ہوں میری یہ پہچان ہے میں حسین ہوں میں نے اس کے مطابق رہنا ہے میں نے اب یہ نہیں جو آیا اس کے پیچھے چل پڑا اور جو بندہ اپنی پہچان بھول جائے اس کو جو مرضی لے جائے اپنی شناخت اس کی نہیں ہے شیطان آیا وہ لے گیا شیطان آیا وہ لے گیا دوسرا بندہ آیا وہ لے گیا کوئی بھی آیا وہ اس کو لے جائے گا وہ اس کے پیچھے چال پڑے گا دیکھیں نا کتے کو پتا ہے میں کتا ہوں بلی کو پتا ہے وہ بلی میاؤں کرتی ہے کتا بھونکتا ہے شیر دھارتا ہے وہ کیوں ان کو اپنی شناخت اپنی ایڈینٹیٹی جس کو کہتے ہیں وہ پتا ہے وہ اس لیے وہ کر رہے ہیں وہ اب یہ عجیب کتا ہے یہ میاؤں میاؤں کر رہا ہے یہ شیر ہے یہ میاؤں کر رہا ہے بلی جو ہے وہ گدے کی واز نکال رہی ہے 
ہمارا یہ حال ہے بھئی اللہ کے بندے ہیں اللہ کے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے امتی ہے اور پھر کیا ہوتا ہے کہ جو ہمیں ٹی وی پہ نظر آ گیا فیش بک پہ نظر آ گیا انسٹرگرام پہ نظر آ گیا یہ مجھے چھالا چلو میں اس کے پیچھے چل پڑتا ہوں یہ تو گویا اس کا کوئی دین مذہب لگتا ہے ہی نہیں کہ وہ جس کے پیچھے مرضی چل پڑا اور سیدہ امام حسین رضی اللہ عنہ نے سبق دیا کہ اپنی پہچان اپنی پہچان کرو اور صرف جو ہے اللہ اور اس کے رسول اللہ نے تمہیں پیدا کیا اور نبی علیہ السلام اس کا نمونہ ہے کہ اللہ کو ادازی کیسے کرنا بس ان کے پیچھے تمہاری چلنا تمہاری پہچان ہے اور پھر تمہارے لوگ خلاف ہو جائیں وہ خلاف ہو گئے تھے خلاف امام حسین رضی اللہ عنہ کے وہ آپ نے چھوڑ دیا فوجیں آ گئیں طاقت آ گئی تیر ہر چیز بیوی بچوں کو ان کو استعمال کیا بلیک میل کرنے کے لیے کہ وہ اپنی جگہ سے ہٹے نہیں کہ میں نہیں اس پر میں اللہ کا بندہ ہوں نبی علیہ السلام امتی ہوں میں شیطان کے پیچھے اور شیطانی لوگوں کے پیچھے نہیں چلوں گا موت بھی مجھے یہ ہلا نہیں سکتی تلوارے نہیں لالچ خوف یہ اور ہمارا یہ آل ہے دل کردہ ہے انجھے کریے تو اس ادھر شروع ہو گئے دل یہ کردہ ہے دل کے دل ہمارا خدا ہے دل تو خود دڑک رہا ہے اس کو کچھ پتہ نہیں ہمارا خدا نہ طبیعت ہے نہ دل ہے نہ کوئی یہ چیز ہے تو ایسا بندہ تو کامیاب نہیں ہوں اس کو تو اپنی شناخت کا پتہ ہی نہیں ہوں کہ میں کون ہوں میں کتنی بڑی طاقت ہوں ہم تو یعنی اپنی اپنی جنتوں کے بادشاہ ہیں اللہ نے پیدا ہمیں فرمایا کہ تمہیں حضور علیہ السلام نے فرمایا صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے کہ سب کے لیے اللہ نے جنت میں جگہ پیدا کی ہوئی ہے اب آپ جاتے ہیں نہیں جاتے وہ آپ کر رہے ہیں لیکن اللہ نے پیدا کر دی جگہ یہ نا بھئی تمہارے لیے بوکنگ ہوئی ہوئی ہے جیسے تمہیں بتائے کوئی تمہارے لیے روم بوک کر دیا گیا ہے اپارٹمنٹ بوکٹ ہے تمہارا حالی دے کے لیے کہاں مکہ شریف مدینہ شریف اب تمہاری مردی ہے تم فلاریڈا چلے جاؤ تو تم چلے جاؤ لیکن تمہارا اپارٹمنٹ ادھر بوک ہے ادھر جا کے جوتے کھانے بشاک کھاؤ لیکن تمہارا اپارٹمنٹ بوک ہے جہنم میں بھی بوکنگ ہوئی ہوئی ہے جس نے ادھر جانا ہے اللہ فانہ سب کی سب جگہ بوک کر دی ہے عام بندوں کی دونوں جگہ بوکنگ ہے بھئی یہ روم بھی ہے دوزخ کا بھی اس کے بھی کنفرمیشن ہے بوکنگ کی کہ ہے اگر یہ کرو گے تو ادھر جاؤ گے ادھر جنت کے ہی بڑی بڑی جنتیں بک ہوئی ہیں آپ کے لئے سو سیدہ امام حسین رضی اللہ عنہ one of the lesson which we get for our lives is that knowing yourself I should recognize myself who am I and then live up to it دیکھنا میں ابھی بتایا ہوا ہے میں every animal every bird is living its own identity ہر چیز اپنی ایک واز نکال رہی ہے it has its own nature but our days sometimes we are behaving there, there we don't know what we are doing meaning actually following anyone even gays and lesbians they should recognize their identity is not that their identity is that they are created by the creator and they have a spirit and they have tendencies so many people have tendencies of doing wrong things some people feel like I should take drugs or I should actually they feel tendency towards women but now if they are married now if they still feel tendencies towards women they should control it it doesn't mean that they should now actually go and touch every woman or if they have enough wealth they still are greedy and now they should actually just confiscate everyone else's wealth and loot everyone else's bank accounts empty them now they should restrain that is there. So in them as well, if there is an urge, if it's not right, they should actually control it. Identity, when one knows that one is, because after all, whatever you do or not do, you are going to die. Angel of death is not going to ask your identity as a, your man or woman or whatever. Here you are. You take it. That's it. 
So Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu is a very, very inspiring life because actually his teachings, he's shown us that when odds are against, odds meaning things are against you. For us, little bit of thing, we become angry and we lose our identity. We see a beautiful woman or women see and we lose our identity. We forget we are servants of Allah, we are followers of Rasulullah sallam, and Allah has commanded not to do this. So we should restrain ourselves. So when a person doesn't know, then this is the thing. Secondly, one should recognize there are certain blessings in this dunya, treasures in this dunya. The Mashaikh say, in the light of the prophetic guidance, that certain things, certain blessings, are in dunya which you will not find it in Jannah. You will be surprised that what is that? For Maya, many have the wrong mindset towards dunya, this world, and view good deeds as burdensome, but if they understand this secret, then they will value what can be found in dunya. What is it? We are sent in dunya in this world to find something that we cannot obtain in paradise. It is us to find hidden treasures. What is that? What are those things which you cannot find in Jannah, which you find only here, and you should benefit from here? And that's what Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu showed. Number one, sacrifice. In paradise, the treasures of sacrifice cannot be found. You want to sacrifice something for Allah? You cannot. There's no need now. There's no life to be sacrificed as such. Death has finished, end of the story. Death has actually ended. There's no death now. If you want to sacrifice or be killed in the way of Allah, you cannot. That only can be done here. One rather does not give up anything for Allah, but in actual fact, everything one is gaining from Allah there, not giving anything back. कौन सी एक फरमाया कि कुर्बानी वहां कुर्बानी नहीं दे सकता बंदा कुर्बानी दे सकता बंदे को कोई अपोजिशन हो कोई मुखालफत हो कोई तकलीफ हो वगैरह वगैरह फिर कुर्बानी दे सकता है बंदा भाई मैं सैक्रिफाइस मैं अपने पैसे सैक्रिफाइस कर रहा हूं मैं अपने जान को कुर्बान कर रहा हूं तो वहां क्या कुर्बान करे वहां तो मौत ही नहीं है दैट इज व्हाई देयर इज अ हदीस in Hadith Sharif, when people will go in Jannah, they will have very high status. Some will say, will not be very, very happy. Angel will say, what are, what is, what's up with you? They say, we want to request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because even in Jannah, as the day of Friday have passed, Imam Tirmadhi mentioned this Hadith, that People of Jannah, they want to be with Allah, they want to meet Allah, they want to talk with Allah, they want to see Allah. But only this opportunity will be given be on Fridays in Jannah. Here you Friday, people who value Fridays, they actually spend Friday in good deed, actually cleaning themselves, actually putting on good clothes, coming to the masajid and, and fill that day with goodness, According to that, they will get the ziyara of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mushahida of Allah and being with Allah, closer to Allah, according to that. Every day, every time, this facility will not be in Jannah. Will be once, meaning a while, meaning on Friday, Juma. That will be the day when people of Jannah will be so happy 
that today we are going to meet Allah, the one who we used to worship. And now we worship, we used to say, Iyya ka na'budu. We, were, we say, used to say, La ilaha illallah. We proclaimed his glory, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, our God. We, and now we can talk with him. Now we can see him. Now we can meet with him. Now we can be in his presence. How happy the people of Jannah will be. But there will be a group who will be saying, Ya Allah, yes, there are a lot of blessings. Even seeing you is greatest and the greatest of blessings. We want to go back in dunya. Please send us back in the dunya. Why do you want to go in dunya? There is all these problems and difficulties and it's a world of tests. They say that we, were ma we are martyrs, we are shuhada. What we found, the pleasure, the closeness and the enjoyment and the privileges by giving our life for you, Ya Rabbul Alameen, we have not found that in Jannah even. Because in Jannah we can't give our lives. We can't, because death has also vanished, become non-existent. So value from this point of view, look at this world from this point of view. It's completely different dimension. It's completely new way to look at this dunya that it's not forever. There are certain there are certain blessings, opportunities which are only available and this is one of it is sacrifice. So next time when actually sacrifice matter comes, there is sacrifice of money or time, recognize this is only available here. You won't be able to give money to poor. Who will be poor in Jannah? So you have millions, billions, and you have bricks and bricks and mountains of gold and diamonds and things. But they value less for you now as such because you can't give them in the way of Allah Jalla Majdu. Who? There is no one to. So here, recognize and appreciate if you can find a poor or a needy person. It's a great blessing. For him it is a test, it's a test for you, plus it's a blessing if you can help him. So that money lying in the bank, if it's just lying there for nothing, is not benefiting you. But if that pound can instill happiness in someone's heart, it has not only, it has a ripple, a domino effect that not only pleasing him, that happiness, joy goes to angels, it goes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become pleased. But only if you spend, and if it's there, it's dead for you. And as the Prophet Islam Islam mentioned, that uh, people say, my property, I'll say to you, how much money? Yeah, I have um, this much money, I have this much money, I have few cars, I have few houses, I have this, I have that. This is only, as they say, deceiving yourself. Why oh, I have so much property, I have made this business empire here. The, the Prophet Islam said, The child of Adam says, my money, my this, my property is not his. It was, what's his is what he has eaten, what he has wore, and what he has sent to Akhira or given in the way of Allah. That is really his. Rest is a deception, you're kidding yourself. Oh, I have 50 houses. You don't have. Yes, if you give 10 of them in the way of Allah, you can have. Otherwise, you can tell people, I have a million houses. None know that million is going to stay. 
no one is going to stay. But yes, yes. if one, two, you are going to send, that is. So he said, like a person is fooling themselves. Because all these companies, McDonald's is a big company, Mercedes is a big company, where are those people who invented them? Who actually came up with them, who set up them, even people don't know them. Only names are there now and those people, even now maybe their grand, grand, grandchildren, maybe even they are not there, now actually those things are there. And you are happy, ah, this is a very good company. They thought it's our, it wasn't. So Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam, sallallahu alayhi wasalam said that actually the Ibn Adam, the child of Adam says, my, my, my money, my money is only yours, what you have used. What you have used on yourself or given it in the way of Allah Jalla Wa'idhu. So when opportunity is to give money, time, you cannot give time to Allah in Jannah. You, there is mention in the hadith, people will, we want to pray, go in sajda. It will be said unto them, raise your head, Allah does, didn't need worship in dunya, nor he needs ears. Just enjoy. Just enjoy yourself. What more you want? Ya Allah, we want to do sajda worship. No, you cannot do that worship. That was only available in dunya. Now you can do one million years worship. It doesn't have that value. Because there's no distraction from shaitan, no distraction from nerves, no sleep, no tiredness. No, the, actually you may say the chores and other things of uh, worldly things, old age and uh, busyness and the time, there's no kind of restriction now. So no, you might end up worshipping million, Allah says, I don't need, you better enjoy yourself. I don't need it anyway. Yes, you could do it when you were in dunya. And me and you are there now. So be happy, privilege, namaz ka waqt aage, any opportunity, any time which is free. Oh, I can do something which I won't even do in Jannah, why not here? I have some extra money, I actually am giving the way of Allah. And Allah has made it easy to give. That He says that if you give, you get back. But you have to have belief on that. You have to have belief on that. Rasulullah said that. Uh, and, and this is all pious, righteous people who are generous, look at their lives. They have, they became, they, when they died, they were more rich. And all stingy people who are keeping together, neither they use themselves, nor actually they let others use. Actually now after their death, the others will use. So, with Allah Azza wa Jal, it's, it's as though if I call any of you and I say, you give me in one hand and with the other hand I give you back. That is when you give in way of Allah. Allah is good, Allah does not have hand anything like us, but I am giving you an example that with His power, with His blessings, ways which we do not know, He returns back, multiplied. But we can't see, this is the test. We think we are giving, but actually we are receiving. That's what Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu said, Ya Rasulullah, I have so much wealth, I can't manage it even. It's quite difficult to manage. He said then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Stop giving in my way and your wealth will decrease. He said, well, I love, I like in dunya, I want to be giving. This is my, one of my hobbies to help people. I want to spend. He said, then your wealth will not decrease. Because Allah's promise, whoever gives. Because Allah is too generous to keep your money. You see, if you give a very rich man, let's say a person who is a trillion, zillionaire, 
and you give him 100 pounds, he would not like to keep it. Even if he keeps, he might give you thousands and thousands of bags. You know. This person has show, shown a token of thankfulness, why not actually bless him more? And who is Allah? He's not a millionaire or zillionaire. He is the creator of He says, be and paradise has come to into existence. He says, be and light and gold and everything come into existence. And when you give something to him, you think he's going to hold back from blessing you? It's against the nature of Allah. He's Jawad, he's Wahhab. He even gives without you not giving anything to him. What about when you give? He is blessing even without actually you. So this is Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu, this one of the lessons which we had learned that he gave, he was the wise, intelligent, he knew he cannot give this sacrifice in Jannah, he could not sacrifice children, his time, his energies, his life in Jannah with this cannot be done. It is a blessing if you, it can be done here. It's a great privilege. Here you think if someone is worshipping, is obedience, he's giving his time, energy, money, people think, oh, this poor person, look, he is giving everything. But he is achieving. You should be envying him positively that you also want to be that person. Because as Imam Idris Awal from Morocco, he said that if you want to see an indication that what's your status with Allah Azza wa Jal, don't look at what Allah has given you, money, honor, that doesn't determine your status with Allah because Allah gives to kuffar. If you want to determine, then consider what has Allah taken back from you. What has Allah taken back from you? How much money did he, he gave you? Million? Has he taken half a million back? Then you can say, I have some status. And if you say, oh, I, Alhamdulillah, I have so many cars, so many much to eat. Firaun, Muslim, non-Muslim, Muslim, atheist, they all have, Allah Azawajal gives dunya as such. It's not that status. So what is he? How much time Allah is taking back from you? Allah has given you 24 hours. So don't say, oh, I have plenty of time to waste. No, you should look what Allah Azawajal is taking back from you. How much time you're giving for deen or people or for Allah Azawajal subhanahu wa ta'ala sake and this. This can give you indication that you have, can have some status with Allah Jalla Majlu. How much energy, how much time, how much you have your talent uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking from you, back from you. That shows that Allah, you are a beloved of Allah, Allah is taking from you. And plus you are getting blessed. Second thing, mujahada. You cannot do mujahada in Jannah. There's no mujahada, there's no striving. Mujahida, meaning striving in the path of Allah, is only here. That's what Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu did, greatest ever mujahid who ever lived. Because other mujahids have armies with them. This is a one man army. Only family with him. And what did he do? He was against the system. Not Yazid as such. Yazid was representing that system which is unlawful and oppressing system upon the creation of Allah. He was against. So we should also be it Muslim, non-Muslim, whoever is oppressor, that's the lesson of Imam Hussain. We are against that person. Who is oppressed, he is Muslim, non-Muslim, whoever, we are with that person. As Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Allah sides with the oppressor even though he is a kafir. And he said that the dua of mazloom, oppressed person Allah hears and is accepted even though he is non-Muslim. So Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu, what, that's what he was against, that Yazid is developing such a system that in which people will do sin and be away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the leader have gone astray and then obviously the followers will go astray as well. So he wanted to cut, otherwise the deen 
would have not got to us in the same pattern, in the same form as we have now, if Imam Hussain Radhiallahu did not stand up, because it could be corrupted. And now even as well, they try their best not to get his message. That's why you won't find many ahadiths or it is narrated from Imam Hussain that he said, Rasulullah, or narrated from Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyidina Imam Hassan radiallahu anhu. They are but very, meaning not so many as the other. They try to block everything because their message was a message of freedom, liberation, that we are not born to become enslaved to people and not born to enslave other people, but born to be free and set others free and bring them into the bondman and servanthood of Allah Jalla Majdu. So mujahada is not in paradise. Yehi karna hai. Think it's a blessing for you to do mujahada here. Third thing, tawba. In paradise, there is no sin, only in the dunya there is, and one is able to, so one is not really able to experience tawba. So that's why Adam al Islam, to experience tawba, he had to, he came on this dunya. Because as such, there is no sin in, in, in Jannah. So tawba, man, a treasure which is only found. In dunya, istighfar, mujahada, sacrifice. Then further it was said, in paradise one will have the vision of Allah. So to believe in Allah and the Prophet of Islam will be absolute certainty. Because you'll be seeing Allah, you'll be seeing angels, you'll be seeing the Prophet, you are seeing Jannah, you are seeing Akhirah. In dunya one can only reach a level of certainty and cannot see Allah, meaning the believing and unseen is only available in dunya. You may know bil ghaib, ghaib par iman only in dunya. This is why when those who die in the way of Allah reach the akhirah and ask Allah to send them back just so they can die in the way of Allah again, it is a treasure that is not found in the akhirah. So here, because now everyone will seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so you can't believe in the unseen now. You can't have Iman bil ghaib in Jannah. That blessing is only here. Like one of the uh, generals of the army of Kuffar in the time of Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he came and he wanted to repent. He said, if I accept Islam, Will I be like you? Sayyidina Khalid ibn Walid said, You can never be like us. We have seen Rasulullah. You will be above us because you have not seen the Prophet. Your status is different from that dimension. We cannot have that Iman which you have. Iman, we have Iman, we have seen Rasulullah. We have a different status. But Rasulullah even praised. He said that. Blessed are those people who see me and have believed. And seven times blessed are those people who have not seen me and believe in me. And he said, I wish to see my brothers. Sahaba said, are we not your brother? He said, no, my brothers are those who believe on me when they have not seen me. Coming until day of judgment, they have never seen me and they have believed in me. I class them as my brothers. You are my companions. Because they believe in the unseen. And he said, on the pulpit of Madinatul Manawara in Masjid Nabi, that I wish I could see my brothers, that I want to meet them. But obviously everyone will meet whoever is true, true Rasulullah in, in Akhirah, in Jannah. But here, anyway, what I'm saying, the Iman bil ghaib, only available here. These, these commodities, these products, Iman bil ghaib, sacrifice, Spending in the way of Allah, mujahada, leaving anything for Allah, doing anything for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mujahada, only available. So take, recognize, have you this privilege. When one understands this, then they realize 
then they should realize how precious this time is of dunya and how precious good deeds are and how precious is to strive in the way of Allah and how precious is to give in the way of Allah to do mujahada to sacrifice the path for Allah contains all of these treasures and more meaning when one follows Tariqai Muhammadiya they are given all these treasures Tawbah, Mujahida are the conditions Aqeedah, Iman, Bil Ghaib is the condition you see that path is full with the diamonds of treasure so reprogram yourself and wake up to this reality that you have certain things which are not in Jannah available here utilize them and then there it will be the reward and you will be actually just reaping the fruit of it. So this is the message of Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu anhu to know yourself and not to give in to Yazid or Shaitan or Shaitanic power, know your identity and know that he didn't leave anything, money, everything was he gave, taken, life taken. Wives, husband, children, relatives, property, even his body, even his head, even his sword, everything taken. Because he knew he's going in the way of Allah. We will not be able to give this in Jannah. Here we can. So he reached to the highest of high. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise his status more highest of high and enable us also to appreciate uh, this blessing. Jazakallah khair to Hazrat <coughs> for insightful nasiya and like Hazrat said that 